If you're watching this video, it's probably because you are trying to figure out how to return to daycare safely. And not just how to do it safely for your family, but how to encourage your fellow parent, colleague, daycare, attendee, parents to return safely as well. The problem is kids can't social distance reliably and who really wants them to? I mean, the idea of telling kids or trying to keep them separate um, would be a monumental hurdle, let alone all of the social impact of yelling at kids as they get within six feet of each other or making them wear masks and keep masks on when they will hardly keep their socks and shoes on. Um, it's like, you know, telling your three-year-old, hey, we don't pee in the swimming pool. It's like, yeah, it's something that you say because you are supposed to, but do they really listen? <laughs> your your mileage probably varies depending on your two or three year old um, and the given day and how much entertainment and excitement they're having in the pool, whether or not they heed your advice. So the bottom line is the likelihood of getting your child to comply with any social distancing or masking guidelines is very low. And you're also probably worried about the social skills of your toddler and those developing and being able to return to work and not worry constantly or have anxiety that today's going to be the day that they're going to get exposed. Um, but realizing that we all do have to return to work to some degree. And we also don't want to necessarily expose ourselves or others um, or expose those that are high risk through our kids or through their kids. There's just so many things that can happen in that daycare setting because of the unknown and because of the way that kids um, like to share germs. First and foremost, let me reassure you that children have less severe coronavirus disease, which means that we can feel confident that even if our child gets sick, even if our child catches it from daycare or from us through exposures at work and they're in the community or whatever, that the likelihood of them of having severe disease is quite low. What we're really trying to do is protect everybody else. Protect our kids too, but really protect everyone else, especially those that are at high risk. Of late, it is likely that your Venn diagram of the people that are in your life has been quite small. It's probably looked something like this, where, hopefully you can see this, there's our family and we're kind of just our family, and then maybe relatives or close friends or coworkers if we've continued to work, um, or those that we see in the community or deliver our Instacart or whatever, um, relatively small overlap. Now, we're going to return to a daycare and all of a sudden our Venn diagrams are gonna get much larger and they're gonna be more overlapping. That wouldn't necessarily be a problem, except that everybody else's Venn diagrams are gonna then start to overlap as well because of the nature of the, the disease spread, especially during the asymptomatic phase where you can spread it before you know. So all of a sudden it goes from just our family to your family as well, and then our kids being the common link between the two, and then the relatives that we have as well. And if that was the case, that would be still pretty small there would be the other contacts as well but the real problem and the real opportunity for exposures is we're talking about not just our family but your family too and then the other families as well and the overlap of all of our kids together and not only that but we're essentially sending them to the daycare likely because we have to return to work in some capacity so our co-workers and then their family and all their relatives our own relatives their your relatives your relatives, your coworkers, other families, relatives and coworkers, and all of the contacts that we see. So really quickly, this becomes lots of areas of shared opportunity to spread germs. So what we're asking to do is to kind of show mutual respect and care for each other. The person that maybe shared this video with you or passed it along or emailed it to you or however you're watching it right now, is asking everyone in daycare to please carefully consider who else is entering your bubble because in doing so they are entering our bubbles as well. We all have people in our lives that are at high risk for complications from coronavirus, whether they be elderly grandparents or those relatives that we have or coworkers that have chronic illnesses that put them at higher risk for severe disease. And what 
in general we're going to do is ask and encourage you to please carefully consider who all is going to be in your bubble because in doing so they're all in our bubbles and we all have people in our lives that we want to protect from coronavirus we also want to protect our kids and ourselves from it as well but likely that there are much higher contacts much those we also probably have contacts that are much higher risk than ourselves that we want to keep safe and protected this will hopefully give us peace of mind and really just you know as much peace of mind as anyone can muster these days that we aren't putting our loved ones at risk um, through these little germ vehicles um, that our children often always are there are three things that all of us can do to help limit the spread as we return to daycare and keep things as safe as possible first and foremost continue social distancing practices meaning keep six feet between you and non-household contacts and wear a mask when you're out in the community um, or around others um, in the community so that you can help prevent the spread to them and prevent their spread to you if by chance either party is infected now you don't have to wear masks when we're going on a family walk or going for exercise or those sort of things where we're not in close contact with others but if we're going to the grocery store or while we're at work being exposed in a conference room or a cubicle or small office space we should wear a mask to help protect the spread from us or to us Secondly, being intentional about our outings and our relatives. And I think if we can all recognize that there's going to be some shared sacrifice at this moment, it will make it much easier if we know that everyone is sacrificing to a similar extent. We're not having large parties with all of our relatives or friends. We're not getting together in big groups. We're keeping it to small groups of relatives that it's really important that we continue to see during this social distancing phase, which probably means that we'll see grandparents and close relatives, but really consider the larger group settings to be something that because we're going to daycare and because we have all of these shared exposure opportunities that we're going to limit those because we want to help protect not just our own family, not just our own relatives or workers, but the families and relatives of all the coworkers that we now overlap in these Venn diagrams for. And then thirdly, if your child is sick, if you as the parent or are sick or were exposed to somebody, I would ask that you be quick to pull your child from daycare. It might just be for a day or two as you figure out, you know, is this coronavirus or is this something entirely different or is it not something infectious at all? Um, but being quick to pull them from daycare so that we limit the spread and we know that everybody's doing their part and nobody is sending their child to daycare um, when they have been recently or significantly exposed or have symptoms. Now, I know that's hard to do, but we will have more success in the long run of keeping our kids safely in daycare for longer stretches of time if we're quick to pull them and then return them when we've determined that it's safe. If we can do these three, if we can all do these three items, continue social distancing, being intentional about our outings and exposures, and then being quick to pull kids from daycare if our child is sick or if we as a parent are sick or we're, if one of us was significantly exposed. If we can do these things, we can all have more peace of mind that everybody is doing their part to help keep us safe. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. This is difficult. This requires self-sacrifice and it requires counting on each other, trusting in each other at this moment. And hopefully because our children share this space and learn and grow from each other and pull each other's hair and bite each other and we all understand those different parts of it, we can hopefully understand the value in keeping everybody as safe as possible. We can't completely limit the spread. We won't give each other death glares in the parking lot or jump at every sniffle or cough because there's certainly allergies and all those other things out there. But we can be intentional and in doing so and sacrificing as a community we can protect our own families our loved ones our co-workers and our community if you got this from someone that sent it to you and said hey what do you think about this it's probably them trying to gently share with you that this is how they're feeling right now and it would help if you could send them maybe just an emoji or a got it or 10 for or heard and agree, whatever, some sort of reply so that they know that you got it and you're on the same page. If it, if you 
do that, then they'll feel comfortable and they'll have a sense of peace that, okay, my fellow daycare parents, we're all on the same page and we're doing this together. And it's going to give everybody that peace and calm as they drop their children off, as they pick them up, as they hem and haw over if this is the right decision. This is big stuff that nobody was anticipating, nor mentally, emotionally, or physically prepared for. And so if you can help give that peace of mind to your fellow daycare parents, um, I think that would go a long way. And if you would, would you share this with another? It Even if you're not in the same daycare together, perhaps they can share this message with those that they go to daycare with or others in the community so that we can have this message spread of here's three strategies to help limit the spread. Continuing social distancing practices, being intentional about outings and relatives and exposures, and then pulling our children quickly from daycare if we're sick so that we can figure out when it's safe for them to return. I hope this message has been helpful. I hope that you'll consider sharing it and keep up the good work.